TikTok crackdown. Several state governors have joined the federal government in banning TikTok on government uh, devices. And now some lawmakers on Capitol Hill, including Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, are open to a possible ban on the app on the national level. But not every state official is on board with the ban. Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer defending her decision to keep using TikTok despite national security concerns. She says it's a communication tool used for disseminating important information. For more on this, let's welcome in Nebraska Congressman Mike Flood with us now. Sir, welcome and thank you so much for coming on. It's interesting when we find bipartisan issues that you can get Republicans and Democrats behind. I just want to play this sound. This is Majority Leader Chuck Schumer speaking about TikTok. Take a listen. It's something that should be looked at. We do know there's Chinese ownership of uh, the company that owns TikTok. And so there are some people in, in the Commerce Committee that are looking into that right now. We'll see, we'll see where they come out. Do you believe we'll see a ban on TikTok when it comes to everyday Americans? Absolutely. Um, I think this is bigger than balloons. Uh, first it was TikTok, then Huawei. You know, the Chinese have their cellular equipment embedded across the heartland next to sensitive military sites. Uh, so my question is, why has it taken us this long to get where we're at right now on TikTok? This needs to happen. And when Chuck Schumer acknowledges that the Senate Commerce Committee has a role to play here, it just makes sense. We're giving up too much data. We're giving up too much information to a country that sees weakness in America. You know, just last week, they sent a surveillance balloon, floated its way across the entire country while the Biden administration did nothing and the world watched. So absolutely, I think that a TikTok ban is uh, is on the horizon. And the minute more Americans realize what kind of threat China poses, I think they'll understand why that app needs to go. Look, there are clearly questions about that surveillance balloon, especially when it was discovered over Montana near that military base, right? So gathering potentially sensitive information about the U.S. military but what about a popular app? What could these Chinese leaders potentially learn from, you know, folks sharing their day to day lives or dance routines that they like to do? Well, you know, obviously it's bigger than dance routines. Mm -hmm. It's their location of their phone, who they have contact with. And once you get into someone's cell phone and you have an app that's operating on someone's cell phone, you can have access to all sorts of information that Americans don't even realize they're giving up. Plus, once you get used to using this app, if the Chinese government wants to try and influence how Americans think, how Americans vote, how Americans view their country. And uh, imagine if we had a, a, a crisis in Taiwan and suddenly there were questions about where what the resolve of the United States is. And China has uh, a pathway into almost every American home and has built a pathway uh, with everybody from age 10 to 28. Uh, and suddenly they're voting age and suddenly they're telling them, hey, this is what needs to happen as it relates to Taiwan. Like we have to look at the big picture. They're planting seeds that will go grow into trees that they plan to use to uh, bring down the United States in their effort to become the sole superpower in our world. Mm. It's obviously a distraction. You can really spend a lot of time on the app without realizing how much time you spend. That's a totally separate issue there. Um, Congressman, while we've got you, I got to ask you about DirecTV's decision to drop Newsmax from its lineup, because conversations like the one we're having right now is not available for DirecTV uh, customers at this point. It's a second conservative channel to be deplatformed by DirecTV in the past 12 months, and it's actually having an impact on AT&T's bottom line. I'm sure you've seen this headline by now, the stock. It's down close to 7 percent, dropping $10 billion in value after the decision to drop Newsmax. Um, what are your thoughts on this? And, and really talk to me about this move and how maybe folks in your district are impacted by this decision. Well, I was one of 40 members of the House that signed a letter uh, as soon as I heard about it. And I have been getting so many calls into my office from Nebraskans that say, we want this channel. We want to be able to watch it. And one thing you have to remember is I live in a rural part of the country where we don't have access to broadband like everybody else does. And so we are dependent on these satellite signals because when you're running a farm, you know, 20 minutes or 30 minutes from really good cell service and you don't have uh, the, the type of fiber that people in cities and communities that are larger have, you rely 
on satellite dish delivery service for TV. We forget about how important that is in rural America. And when you start taking channels off of that platform, you start disenfranchising Americans, especially in rural areas where satellite TV is really the only good option when it comes to uh, being able to watch different channels. We don't have the access to YouTube TV in some parts of Nebraska. Yeah, you know, that's what we've heard from viewers. Again, the decision by AT&T, Direct TV to drop Newsmax has just been so frustrating because sometimes the alternative is just not out there, but they are missing these important conversations. Um, and, and speaking of important and timely and relevant news, and maybe some transparency also, when it comes to this administration, the Biden administration, and how forthcoming they've been about the, the Chinese surveillance balloon, the other unidentified objects that have been shot down. What more are you expecting? What more would you like to know from this administration? And what more should the American public have access to when it comes to these latest news headlines? Well, I know Speaker McCarthy has been at the table to fight and get us as much information as possible. We're obviously concerned we don't have the information. We're getting calls from our constituents wanting to know what's going on. One of these balloons passed near uh, Stratcom, which is in my district, which controls the nuclear triad, one of the sites that controls the nuclear triad. Uh, we have 10,000 uh, airmen and women that live in my district, and they go to work every day to keep us safe, and they're wanting to know what is going on. And so uh, hopefully we'll have a briefing later today. Uh, I don't think that uh, the White House can share enough information. You just have to get it out there. Let Americans know what's going on so that we can understand what the response is. And the response needs to be more than the finer points of diplomatic decorum. We need to know that we're putting America's interests first. And I think that's what's concerning so many people. We really haven't heard from the president either on the matter. If he could come out and take some reporters' questions, now would really be the time to do so. That's Nebraska Congressman Mike Flood joining us this morning. Thank you, sir. We appreciate your time today. Thank you for having me on. You're welcome. As we've been talking about, DirecTV claims that they're saving you money. It's just not true. They're keeping 22 liberal news channels that cost you much more than Newsmax, and they've got lower ratings. You can support free speech and Newsmax and oppose censorship. You can call today. It takes just a few minutes. You can head to IWantNewsmax.com and sign our petition. It is easy to do. We thank you for your continued support.